How's it going, Flair? Um, this, when you say to learn it, you mean to start getting things done? Not long. To to know it as well as I know now, well, as long as I've been using it. It just matters on what you need per game. There's still stuff I could learn, and there's still stuff. But, you know, I got enough that I can get most of what I need done. It just depends on how complicated your game is. If you were to do, like, a match three game, it would take you a week to learn blueprints, and you would know everything you need for one of those. But, uh, you know, if you were to do a massively multiplayer online first-person shooter mixed with third-person hack and slash, it would take you a year. But you just kind of start, break it down piece by piece, and then move from there. Yeah, self-taught mostly, so just a lot of uh, a lot of Google. It's a really good community here in Unreal. So you know, if you run into a problem, you can Google on the forums. You can Google the Answer Hub. There's a lot of uh, video tutorials, and then worst case scenario, you can ask the question, put it up on the forum, and about a day later or hours later, somebody may answer you, point you to the right direction. And there's kind of people like me too, where like you can you can jump on here, uh, and I could help you out if you ever have a question. I'm live, and there's a lot of people who are willing to help. So if you're making a game, like just say so, and we can uh, we can do our best to help. Yeah, you just kind of dive in. Just start going. That's the best advice you can do. You can always talk yourself out of why you're not going to be able to do it and why it's going to be too hard and blah, blah, blah. But the best advice you can, you can do is just, just jump in and start going.
Ritzler, what's up? And then Flare on YouTube. How do you get character movement animations for a game? Do you make them in Maya? Yeah, all your animations you're going to need to make in Maya. Um, otherwise, um, when you first start, as it sounds like you're about to start, um, use Mixmo. I think that means you're doing a third person if you're asking about animations, because first person doesn't require many. Um, right here. So right here, Mixmo. And then get this, it's free. And then I'll have a bunch of animations in there for you. So start with those animations, this way you don't get held up on animations. Um, yeah, that's it for now. It's the free animations. Also do all the, uh, so there's a bunch of free stuff you get with the engine. Um, what you can get with the engine. So start with all that free stuff. Uh, Mixamo, and then do this effects pack, do the grasslands, do the ice lands, do the weapon pack, do the warriors, firelands, adversaries. So everything under is going to be under infinity. So grab all that free stuff and then start making your game from there. You'll at least have some models, you'll have some swords, some guns, some some places to play around with, some animations, and then you can jump into blueprints, slowly start building out the game you want to make, not the game that they already have, um, and then replace things as you go along. Kind of see how their animations are done and how they broke them up into two or three different places, like a loop animation when you're in the air, since you don't know how long it'll take to jump from jumping on the flat ground to jumping on the higher ground to a lower ground to a, sh a short ground to a just a, a little bit up. So. You need a loop in the middle of there, so pay attention to how they set up all theirs. And then slowly just um, build out your game, basically. It'll save some time in getting started. I mean, you can't, you don't want to ship a full game with just those assets in it, because your game's gonna be just, you know, kind of typical. You still gotta learn how to make games kind of a thing, but it gets you started. At least you can move forward. It'll save you a lot of time in the beginning, and in the beginning's kind of where you can kind of uh, get a little overwhelmed. You can feel, uh, like it's just too difficult, so it's kind of nice to at least get going first. Ugh.
Yeah, next week too. Well, not next week. Yeah, it'll probably be next week. I'm, I'm waiting for the modeler, Dave. He's, he's supposed to... He's going to give me a character who's already characterized in Maya because I don't feel like doing it. I'm just going to make him do it. Um, and then I'll be actually going through... I'm supposed to be working on that honestly today. I was supposed to do a tutorial all week about how to set up animation blueprints, how to do a running animation, how to do attack, how to get your enemies to attack you. So basically, I'll be going through games kind of from scratch. Um, at least third person. Honestly, you can still use it in first person. So I'll tell you the truth, just about most games with fighting in it. Um, I'll be going through that from scratch probably Monday because I'm going to basically focus on asking him to get me prepared for Monday. Um, I didn't tell him last week that that's what I wanted to do. I just assumed he would have that done. And he did have a character done. It just, it, it would take an hour or two for me to set it up. And I don't feel like it. I'm not doing that. Um, so I'm going to make him do it. At that point, I will be going through... All of the animation blueprints, getting things to work with velocity and which direction you push, and when you push a button, you attack. I'll set up a master material that's important. Um, so one material that you can use over and over and over again as the game goes on. But yeah, um, some interesting stuffs coming up. Nothing terribly fancy, I'll say that. Like, I just bought it at like a micro center down the street here. And it's covered in cat hair. Um, it's not bad at all, but it's nothing like amazing. It probably couldn't play like the best games on top quality, but it could play the mid range games maybe. I don't really play games. Uh, to tell you the truth, I've been using a laptop for the last. X years, so my laptop is terrible. Um, it can barely hold 30 frames a second, but with Unreal, you can always lower the lower resolution. You can you can do things to make sure that you can work on just about any PC, any laptop. Um, so you'd be fine. Your compiling times may be a little slow, but mine are fairly slow, honestly. And I technically have a decent PC. But up here, um, so it doesn't technically matter what you got, because you can always set it in settings right here, engine scalability. Right now everything is on epic for me, but you could set it down lower, and if you do that, then you'd be fine. Um, you set it to medium, and I'll go, you know, double the, the frames per second or whatever the heck, so. And it's actually pretty decent to work in that way anyways. Um, stream while I was working. Uh, mostly just kind of to build up a, a bit of an audience so there's some awareness that the game A exists, B is still existing. Um, and then um, it's been nice to kind of talk to people who are in Unreal Engine as well. So where is the engine? Because mine ain't too great. No, you'd be fine. Any, any PC you got would be fine. The scalability, you can set it down all the way to low. Don't get me wrong, at that point, you'll be making it as if it's running on Nintendo Switch or Wii or a, like a phone. And then you'll probably need a better PC or use a friend's PC if you want to try and make it look like it's on PlayStation 4. But it depends on what game you're going for, obviously. World of Warcraft works on all systems. They don't go too crazy with all the, you know, super high poly stuff. And that's how I would suggest working anyways. As an indie developer, it's smarter to work on the cheaper, more artistic side of things rather than go with super hyper-realistic because it's Triple H. I mean, it's Triple A. Triple H. 
wrestler. It's triple A. Uh, so they have a million billion people to work on making sure it's super realistic. You're not gonna have that Be smarter basically like like Wind Waker that was you know, it's beautiful game, but it's not Hyper realistic and it was easier to make than if they'd gone with hyper realistic so Riddler, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's mostly why I did it is because I I don't ever. It's hard for me to convince myself to go and like create an update, and make sure everyone knows I'm still working on the game, and check all your spelling, make sure you didn't spell something stupid, that kind of thing. So I just it's easier if I can just hit stream and then just get to work, and people can figure it out on their own. Yeah, but that's just me being lazy too. I technically should have done updates. I mean, so I'm, I'm fully aware it's on my fault for not doing them. I just, hard to keep motivated to do things that's not interesting. I don't find that to be very interesting. Yeah, there's not enough uh, indie hack and slashes, and it's actually kind of an easy genre to start with, if you ask me. But, you know, then again, I guess I've never done the other ones, so maybe I have no clue. Yeah, never, I mean, I just never did updates on it, but I have been working on it pretty much nonstop. Well, not nonstop. There was one year I didn't go, didn't work on it so hard, but I mean, I still worked on it. Still got turned on and I still uh, would get a level done or anything. Um,
Yeah, no, it's uh, um, the first. I, I just kind of learned about Twitch basically a month. Well, I, I knew Twitch existed. I just didn't watch people Twitch stream games until about a month ago, a month and a half ago. About a week before I decided to start doing it. Um, and one of the people I watched is Kindred Dev on Twitch. And he's making a very cool game, Swords and Magic. And uh, he would just talk to everybody and help all the time. And like he said, you know, what's the point of what's the point of streaming with people if you're not going to talk to them and kind of interact with them? And I agree. Like, it kind of doesn't have much of a point if you're not going to interact with the people. So with that in mind, um, you guys should check out his game as well. That's uh, that's Kindred. He's got a very cool game. He wanted to make something that him, his wife, and his kid could play. And he has a daughter. Uh, so it's it's kind of like everyone can have fun picking up and playing that game. It's, it's very pick up and play. You don't have to invest like a whole lot before you start. You don't have to invest a whole lot before you decide to drop out. It's just just fun. Just good old fashioned fun. I, I really like his game. He's a really cool person too. And that was the first Twitch stream I watched. Okay, you've been to his stream. Yeah, he's he's awesome. He used to be um ever brave. Yeah, changed his changed his name apparently. And yeah, the uh, demo or beta. No, I mean I don't think I'm really gonna bother with a demo anything like that. It takes me time to create it. And I can just get the game done instead. At some point I'll have to have people test things out, absolutely, but...
das alte Ding war. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on how much, what is it called, creature, uh, feature creep, basically. It's when you just keep coming up with new ideas and adding them, and a new idea and adding it, a new idea and adding it, to the point that you end up with a game that's just way too big, Ritzler. So, just watch your feature creep, and it'll definitely help the game not be too difficult to make. Um, but if you, if you go overboard, you're, you're kind of screwed. Just, just don't go overboard is really the best you can do for yourself. Um, I certainly had that issue. I added too much. This is too big of a game for essentially one developer to make, which is what I am. Zulfer, what's up? Yeah, anything. If I can help, let me know. I'll do my best. Flare, you might try a hack and slash as well. Yeah, no, you definitely should. I mean, there's a bunch of different versions of that. It's not, it's not a hard one to do. RPGs to be a nightmare? Not really. I mean, it's really like you start with the fighting. It, it matters on what kind, of course. Um, um, RPGs, it's, it just kind of depends. Obviously, if you go with like an open world, yeah, sure, you're, you're asking for a lot of creatures, a lot of environment, all that stuff's kind of a, it's just, it's just time. It just takes a lot of time, and you need kind of some help with that. You need more than one person, really. Um, horror games, those are always good because you do a lot of darkness, and then just like the flashlight, so honestly, you don't have to really worry about repeating textures and all that kind of stuff. So, some, so there's some bonuses in doing horror games. A lot of darkness and shadows, which looks great in this engine, covers up some of the work you have to do, which is kind of nice. Not to make fun of horror games. I mean, believe me, they're, they're work. It's just... It's just kind of nice. All about detail and story. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, but if you do enough story, or if you do a... Um, stylized one like uh, Wind Waker again if that was an open world RPG I think people would love it and luckily that has low graphics in a way I mean it's not much at all all right Zulfur you have a flying pond with a flying moving component and now I want to push other dynamics around it but there doesn't seem to be an option for that I noticed that too you want to push other dynam dynamic objects around I don't uh, so what's the issue? You have a flying pawn with a flying movement component and you want to push other dynamic objects around. Does this mean you want that flying pawn to push things? And then uh, Flare, you're asking about a racing game. It's less features. You know, racing games are fine, it just depends on Everything depends on how much detail you want to put in. If you're talking about, like, the slip difference between certain tires on exactly what day, on how hot the heat is and the sun and water and wind, you want to get that detailed, yeah, then you're in for, for a lot of trouble in a racing game because you've got a lot of math to figure out and make sure it works correctly. Whereas if you're just gonna um make a fun racing game then you're then you're solid it, it just it's really up to you um what was
was that called? There is a racing game on here already. Epic gave us one. You know what? Maybe I just have it in my library. I probably do. The Bolt. And they have a lot of details in their racing game about... Uh, there we go. Vehicle game right here. So if you decide to go with a racing game flair, start with this vehicle game. Look into how they did it and what the tires do separately and everything. There's a lot of free stuff Epic gives you and sets you up. In the blueprint tutorial, there's a... Blueprints. There's a bunch of mini games in here. Actually, no, it's in content examples. Blueprints actually doesn't have it. It's in content content examples. You want the flying pawn to push other objects away when crashing into them. Um kind of feel like physics is going to be your your best bet on that. Let let Epic handle all your physics for you. Let's see where would be an example for you. Cuz I'm thinking like the billiards games, you know, when you're playing pool and one ball smacks into another ball and it goes flying off. Um I'm not done much with physics. I actually try to uh, animate everything so I don't have to do anything in physics just because whenever you're looking at like glitches, most of the time it's physics glitches. You know, a door hits another door, hits a person and they fly off into the stratosphere. I, I, I try and actually stay away from physics. However, I think that'd probably be your best bet is to do physics. Um, this way your pawn could fly, hit another one and then move it. They may have that, in fact, in that racing game, that vehicle game a second ago, where one car hits another car. They may be able to push that car a little bit. Um, look onto the Unreal Engine forums and look for, you know, uh, bumper cars, racing games, uh, flying cars maybe smashing into each other, billiards, that kind of stuff. Uh, any of that should have physics interacting, smacking into each other to another one and bumping it. And then how they figured out, I mean, it's mostly like forward vectors and hit locations and then using a force dependent on a velocity, which is not that difficult at all. Someone will have all that math for you figured out, in fact, because there's legit math that goes with that in real world. Um, the gravity is already in here in your physics and the weight and all the rest of that kind of stuff is already in here in your engine. So it's, it's actually going to not be very difficult at all, if you ask me, um, to, to set that up. That's where I would look into. I gotta admit, that's really outside of my game scope. I stay away from physics. I don't want the the problems that physics brings me. It was always something I went, nope, stand away from it. Stacking trash. Yeah, there's a let me uh, let me pimp another great streamer on here, Mozzie. He actually may even be. Yep, he is right now. In fact. Dreaming. So he's got a game where he stacks. I'll put him in here too. Mozzie has a game where he stacks things. It falls, and then another one falls, and another one falls, and I think it has some balancing components to it. So. There's a, you definitely want to check out Mozzie. He may have some some advice even. I think he's he's streaming right now. How far have I come around? I'm going I'm getting back to this stream over here real quick, Bryant. Um, really great to see this game come back on my radar. How far has it come along? Eh, it's been a, it, it's a slow progress. Um, I got like two levels now up to that 95%, and I'm just going through each level. The blueprints are in, the bones are in, and I just got to fill it out so that it could ship tomorrow if I wanted it to, and that's where I'm at right now. Just getting the components in to say this level's complete, opening up boss levels. It takes a long time. It's really just me kind of doing this game. Printing one level, level strike. 
crack in video game form. Uh, the hit reaction is nice. More place when attacking or receiving hit. Is it better to keep the player and enemy in one place when attacking or receiving hit? I like to have the control over um, where my enemies. Well, I'll go beat up one right now. So they don't move too much. I don't like sliding around. It's confusing for the camera. It's confusing for the player, in my opinion. Um, so I kind of like them to stay in one spot. She does move forward when she takes an attack, just because most of the time, if you're just a little bit off, it gets frustrating. But she does. But she moves forward into them, and then they're right there, so they just kind of stay on each other. And I turned off a lot of physics to make sure that there was no bouncing and flying off into space when one. So a lot of collisions are just off. There's not a lot blocking, so I like to keep things fairly stationary, honestly. Um, DJ, where'd I get the sounds from? I probably bought these. Um, so there's a, yeah, Pro Sound Collection. I bought, I bought two packs. Back in the day, you used to have to pay to use Unreal Engine. 20 bucks a month, 30 bucks, I can't quite remember. And so I used to be subscribed to it. And then one day they announced Unreal Engine's free. And for everyone who was currently playing, uh, paying, they gave them a bunch of like uh, Unreal cash, basically, credit, so you could buy stuff in the engine. Um, so one day I basically turned this on. And up in this corner I had uh, some cash sitting so I could buy things. Um, so... Yeah, I, here it is. There was there was some money sitting up here for me, so I ended up buying some sound packs because I knew I wasn't gonna do foley. And if I did do foley, I'd still want some, you know, footprints, all that kind of stuff. Blah 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 blah. Um, so I bought those. This pro sound collection, and I think I have a universal collection. It's just that kind of stuff that just has random sounds in it that you're gonna need for random things. And so I don't have to go and find a bell sound. <laughs> Though, don't get me wrong, Wikipedia has a ton of free sounds on there that work, in some cases, honestly, better than the stuff you buy because they're just really, really good because there's a lot of cool people in the Wikipedia community. Um, yeah. There's also some sounds in, like, the vehicle game, in the, in the platforming game, in the blueprints tutorial, in the Zen Garden, and all those things that Epic gives you, you can take those sounds right out of it, migrate it into your project, and you can use them too. So use everything. So DJ, if I were you, look into all the free stuff that they gave you in Unreal, and migrate all the sounds into your project. There'll be something useful. Check Wikipedia, and maybe buy a pack of sounds for 20 bucks. Get one of those big universal ones. The specialized ones are too specialized, in my opinion. They're not gonna be very useful for a whole game. As for who did the music, this is um, Slime Rancher. So it's labeled as Harry Mac, but I gotta admit I'm on Spotify and Spotify's not as legit as I thought it was gonna be. I only started using Spotify for this Twitch streams. And I thought that, you know, well at least I'll guarantee that it's gonna come from the indie developers. Uh, sometimes it's other people putting their stuff up. So I think it's Harry Mac for the Slime Rancher, but um, I can't say I'm positive, unfortunately. I sure hope it's them. And if it's not, sorry Slime Rancher people, you made a great game though. So do any of the attacks have hard knockbacks, knockdowns? Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of different reactions that they will go through dependent. So when I say play animation, you know, I tell my, I at that point set the way I want the enemies to accept that animation. So we'll. So on that, that last one, so. They all react differently. We're actually going to get out of this level for a second. Let's, um, let's go to a level that's a little bit more complete. We'll go to the, um, we'll go to the, the level right before this one. 
There we go. And then I'll, I'll just speed up some things for a second. DJ, you were looking for game sounds? Yeah, I mean, like I said, all the free stuff in Unreal, definitely do that. Um, if you're talking about music, I got nothing. Um, I got nothing on music yet. I don't even have music. I'm just, I got nothing on what I'm going to do for music. I'll probably end up having to hire someone. But if you're looking for game sounds, the bell, the attacks, the swings, all that kind of stuff, look into Unreal's free stuff. And then probably have to buy a pack of game sounds eventually. That's what I had to do. Otherwise, you have to make the foley yourself. But once again, Wikipedia is great. I'm kind of waiting for these shaders to compile. Attack, sound, swing. Yeah, Wikipedia. Um, the pack I bought. There's obviously games um, that have attack sounds. All this kind of stuff. It's uh, so we'll do content filter. sounds. So this is one pack I bought, but then there's things like uh, acid spray. spray That came from uh, Infinity Blade. So they had a, a sound pack. I'm not sure if, we're, or if I'm supposed to have that. I think they took it down <laughs> and I just happened to download it before they took it down. I think they found that they had some things in there that they didn't have the rights to give out, so that's why I can't really suggest that, but... But yeah, all the attack sounds, there's a lot of attack sounds in here from their games. Like, they had a, a VR fighting game, so that one for sure has attack sounds in it. That one for sure has sword and clinking and, and, uh, and shields and everything else, so... They got plenty of free stuff, plenty of free sounds. They have, you know, they basically make a game, give it to you, and you can steal whatever you want from it, which is nice. So a lot of royalty free stuff, exactly. A lot of royalty free stuff all over the place. It, it, it does suck to, to, to um, sift through it all, but once you get it, you only need it once. You only need to have the one sound that you're looking for. Um, but I don't really have sounds in. Everything I have in is just placeholder for now. Um, contact email in here? Um, Catch me anytime I'm here on Twitch, honestly. Um, I'm on the Unreal Engine forums. I'm here on YouTube. I Twitch stream daily, basically, Bryant. So, um... Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. To, um, to find the music and sound. I'm not gonna pull anybody in on the project till I'm, like, done. Cause I, cause it, it's been years. So, if I had pulled somebody in years ago, they'd just be sitting around waiting for me. I use animation montages, absolutely. Um, nothing but montages. I just I'll call it in the in the engine. And then when I collide with them, I tell them how I want them to react to the damage, whether it's a knockback or whether it's fly down like that, fly back up. Just a lot of tiny parts, one by one. Montages, a big reason why I use those. Sorry, this sounds a little high. Um, is because they come automatically with a blend in the beginning, and you decide how long you want the blend to last from zero to one inside the uh, animation you're playing, and a blend at the end. So they automatically blend. So all my animation montages, if it's an attack, it basically has a zero blend. It just goes straight into the attack all super fast. Um, if it, but blending out tends to be like point four seconds, you know, so quite a little while to blend back into. Uh, do my Twitch link in here. It 
should be in the description, hopefully. Otherwise, I'll fix that. Because, yeah, I do want everyone to know where they can find me on Twitch. But I'll be on there every day. And just about every day. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, I'm on. I Twitch stream. In the afternoon. And then I do it late at night as well. A lot of nights. Not every night, though. But, yeah, I blend out a lot. This way, it always blends back to the right idle animation. Because these idle animations are different. So that is a different idle animation than that. So I blend out quite a while to get into that position well. As for blending in, it's pretty much zero. It just goes straight to it as fast as possible because it makes it feel responsive to players when they push a button and they see it happen immediately. Thank you, Flair. I appreciate it. It's been a, been a while I've been working on the animation. It's, it's too much, honestly. I probably shouldn't have went with four different styles and, a, and then punching and then... You know, bow and arrow. Just a lot of stuff. Counters for things like that one. Instant deaths like that one. Magic for no good reason. I really shouldn't have magic in this game. It took way too long to put in anyways. Thank you, appreciate the follow. I need plenty of them, honestly. Resiant. I appreciate it. Thank you, appreciate the follow. I know, I gotta mute myself, because I don't want to hear myself. That's just weird. I kind of forget I should be watching that over there. Need to learn how to do montages. Well, next week, like I said, I'll be setting up a game from scratch, and I'll go through how to do all the animal montages and how to get the enemies to react. Because um, I'll be working on my my co-developers game um, so we'll go through animation blueprints we'll go through enemies so even if you don't join me live you can at least watch the video for i think two weeks is how long that lasts on um on twitch and then i upload the videos if i remember on youtube and i'll make sure to remember on those so I'll make sure to do that as well. So we'll go through all that on how to use animation, montages, and everything. Delay attacks, attacks different in holding. Yeah. So when I go up in the air like that, that's because I held X. I mean, that's because, yeah, it's X on an Xbox. Um, when I'm blocking, it's because I'm holding my defense button. If I tap it and go a direction... I do that. If I just tap it, I counter. So actually, one button here has three different functions, technically. Um, so yeah, I, I have how to do the whole, like... Holding versus pushing, or tapping, I should say. That's holding B. If I just tapped it, she would have punched. Pushing an enemy back. Um, so when I, so right now that's gonna just say hit enemy, hit enemy, hit enemy. But when I do that fourth one, it says how should the enemy uh, take that damage? And the answer becomes knockback. So it says, well, okay, in a knockback, what should I do? We'll play this animation. And that animation looks like they got knocked back. Um, so I'll go through that as well for sure when we set up the enemies next week on the zombie game. Um, he's making an old people versus zombie game. It's all super roguelike, so every time you push play, it, it's a different scenario. 
than uh, what you were playing a second ago. It'll be drop in, drop out with, with a multiplayer, uh, local multiplayer. I don't know if we'll do anything online, but we'll go through on how to make them react differently, which weapons change their attacks, all that kind of stuff. Um, but for the most part, you're just changing. You're just changing um, a simple like A, B, C, or D kind of a thing. That attack A, 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 B. That's it. You just you just change a little thing in there, and they they go a different direction in the code, so that they play a different animation. Second animation looks like they got knocked backwards. Perfect. I appreciate it, Brazilian. It'll be a little while until I get any sounds or music in. Um, I don't want to bring anyone in on the project and then have them sit forever while their energy fades. It does kind of suck to uh. To be excited for something then have to wait forever but absolutely need it hopefully this summer i'll be finally where i need to be on bringing other people in to finish the thing no i, I definitely i mean i i have to help him with that game no matter what he needs someone to do blueprints and i know how to do it so um i'll do that and i'll try my best just to remember to put it up on youtube uh, if not it will be there for sure on What's it called? It'll be there for sure on Twitch for two weeks. And I think YouTube saves all my videos and they just keep them unlisted. So worst case scenario, I'll forget for, you know, three months and I'll just list them all all at once. But I think that they're still sitting there. So I know there's a few streams I haven't actually uploaded because I forgot. But if that's the case, then I'll just have to upload them. But they're still there. So worst case remind me is kind of what I'm saying. Because at least it's still there. I just I forgot. But I'll make sure to put it in. What's the hardest thing to implement? Thank you, Brazilian. I appreciate how... Uh, yeah, if you've been watching it for a while, it definitely has grown quite a bit since day one. Uh, hardest thing to implement? Eh, it's kind of like a... You know... It's a little, little hard to answer because there's like a lot of little things that could have given me a hard part all day. Um, but everything technically is broken down little by little. You, you focus on the one thing at a time until you to kind of get them all in. But it's all a bunch of simple little ideas, all that put together. Um, it's a lot of a lot of the coding is just simple simple stuff. A lot of it's cheating. There's like three different arrows I use so that she can uh, shoot a bow and arrow like that. I use three different arrows and it just looks like it's the same arrow, but I cheat all the time. It's, it's all one big magic trick, which is fun. So there's two different heads he uses to pick that up, maybe even three, honestly, again. So it looks like he has, it's one head he's screwing around with, but it's actually like three. specific which time oh the slowing down yeah it's dependent on per enemy um no every enemy can be slowed down um it's just each enemy has their own time that they'll be slowed down he's a weaker one so he slows down for a long time um, but we'll kill him and then his slightly stronger version that one that one won't slow down as well as long so Yeah, he's already back up. So that's uh, probably about half the time as the other version. 
And then the gold one that'll happen once I kill this guy. He doesn't slow down much at all. So it's all dependent on the enemy. Um, but it's all the same code for that. And it's just me changing a number, you know? How, how, how long does it happen? And that's just learning on Unreal enough to, to put in variables. And then once you do, you're, you're pretty set. So this one, he doesn't slow down much at all. And he's back up. The link to the sound wiki page? Um, you mean on a wiki, Wikipedia? I'm, I'm talking literally Wikipedia. Wikipedia Commons. Um, they got just a lot of like free sounds. So like I when I, I know when I was looking for the Japanese chimes that play, um, I went to Wikipedia Commons to find what they would sound like because I knew someone would have had it recorded from Japan themselves. So I just went to Wikipedia, looked up chimes, and someone had an example right on the page of what those chimes sound like when they when they're um, active. Um, so that's all I'm talking about, just Wikipedia. Literally the link is just Wikipedia and especially Wikipedia comments. Yeah, the witch time. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's face it, I got that idea from, from Bayonetta, so I know exactly what you're talking about when you're like, witch time. It's like, it's got a Bayonetta. We'll go to the shrunken tea garden. So that level I just worked on for the last, like, two, three weeks, little by little, um, and that one's... 90% done. I have to texture two or three more things. Um, and But for the most part, that's done. I got to texture those bosses at the end. That's not the texture they'll be having. And then I'm on the water temple, and it's the same thing there. It's just filling it out. And then one day I go back and I do all the uh, cutscenes, cinematics, all that kind of stuff. But I'll just do that all in a row. So my brain's just on that. Um, I know I gotta go through again and do a special effects pass. All the special effects in here are placeholders. All the sounds are placeholders. So, it's about just getting things a little by little, but, you know, it has a boss fight with those three guys. This has a boss fight, which is fun. Thank you, Brazilian. I appreciate it. I definitely like people to know about the game, and if there's anything I can ever do to help with any game or anything, especially Unreal and Blueprints, I love that stuff, let me know. Um, otherwise just come by, chill, talk, we'll hang out. I'm always down. Catch another time for sure. So in this one's case, we are the size of a toenail. It's going to be the size of us on this one. Um, we're not very big. It's of course, you know, the shrinking element. Always need that in an Alice in Wonderland game. Or growing big, all that kind of stuff. So the art that you're seeing being added, that is, um, is it better to shrink a mesh or make it bigger? It doesn't matter. It's just math. The, um, you know, I, I know that's always been like a very impressive thing in games when I'm like, look how big that monster is. And now I understand that games don't give a crap. It has to draw a triangle. It has to draw a triangle. If something's this tiny and it has a million meshes, it's way harder to render and something that's super large that has five meshes. The size doesn't matter to the computer. It's just a number. Is it one? Is it a hundred? I don't care. 
So size doesn't matter in, in the slightest. Um, so Alice is exactly, honestly, the same size as she was before. Everything else is just bigger and it just makes her look small. But I didn't change Alice's size, so I didn't have to worry about the, worry about doing anything like that. You know, that would be more difficult for me. This way all the particles and everything can be the same, especially all the stuff that, uh, you know, travels from level to level. Everything's just the same size. Collision wise, you can you can ruin things if you get too small and you can ruin things if you get too big, but we're talking disgustingly large numbers and disgustingly small numbers. So you're almost trying to screw with the engine at that point anyways. Um, so just try and stay, you know, relatively decent size. Um, you know, Shadow Colossus size, you can do that all day. That's nothing, you know? So don't don't worry about that. But, you know, if you were to make it the size of a world, like, yeah, you're, you're, you're screwing with the engine at that point. It's not going to like it. It's just not going to happen. So you can screw with things if you, if you push the numbers to just ridiculous things. But for the most part, you'll be fine. Like, I know um, things can move so fast your collision doesn't count especially if there's a frame rate hitch or something like that so just don't just don't be silly you'll be you'll be fine for the most part most people aren't going to make something larger than something in shadow colossus and you can do that don't have that character then move like the flash because that's a lot of space they're covering How many tries is Alice? She's probably about 20,000 total, um, with probably a quarter of that just being her hair. There's a whole lot in her hair. Um, she's got a lot of layering on there. There's a, there's a lot on her sides. There's a, there's a lot of in her hair, honestly. Uh, she doesn't need to be that high, but we figured we'd just go overboard on the hair, and this way, at least on the cutscenes up close, she would, she would always kind of look fairly nice. Um, a lot in, in her uh, face, honestly. The body's not so much. But 20,000 at this point is almost even low end. You look at something like the Final Fantasy characters whose hair is a whole lot of theirs. Um, yeah, they're, they're even higher. The highest I've ever seen was like Deadpool, funny enough. That one had a really high poly count. To learn how to make characters, we used to get all those models that they just rip on like DeviantArt. And I just like download them and just see what they look like. Um, so we could kind of learn. And Deadpool was like one of the highest models we'd ever seen. I was thinking maybe it was a cinematic version or something, but he was just ridiculous. I don't know why. Doing the counter attack was that hard? Yeah, it was. It, it had its problems. It, it definitely has its issues um, doing counter attacks. So we'll do one over here. We'll kill these guys. And um, we'll do a counter attack real quick. Um, the big thing is like you have to make sure the animations line up, you have to make sure they play at the same time, you have to make sure you're standing in the right spot. Uh, so. so to make sure that you know her feet are on the head or at least close enough. And that one basically acts like a counterattack too, it's using the same function, the instant deaths. Um, so they're they, they can be issues. What I ended up doing a lot of times is putting in a, uh, a socket on the, on the um, bones in their body. So it's always where I, there's always a, th my character will stand here. And then the animations can at least have a same starting point. Because you obviously can't just assume that your player is going to be standing where you want them to when they hit counter. Who knows if they're... If they're turned around when they hit counter, you know. So it, it it's okay. It's you gotta you gotta screw with it, but you could get it easily. It's a lot of animations, but it's, it's not so bad. You're basically just playing two animations at one time. The enemy's animation and your animation, they look like they line up. 
sometimes I come across something where I'm like, eh, that, that was a little off, but I know it and most people don't, so pff, screw it, you're fine. There's a lot of mistakes in games. We started learning that, a lot of clipping. And Maya Alice is clipping really bad, but um, but we're waiting for a fix before I can fix that. She has a she has an issue with um, cloth right now that we have to fix. Dave's supposed to fix that. I think that I have the new model up. I just haven't imported it yet. Um, but a lot of games do a lot of clipping issues. There's a lot of meshes going through each other in the world. There's, there's mistakes in games like all the time, and no one cares. So. I never noticed before, so I'm not too worried about the people noticing animations not lining up in counters and stuff right now. Jenna, thank you. Appreciate that so much. It's actually the first cheers we've had, I think. So that's awesome. It's always super fun. Yeah, yeah. Infamous Second Son. Yeah, are you talking? That game looks amazing, but yeah, they put in a whole lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, really high poly. Game looks amazing though, so it definitely shows. Yeah, they probably had LODs too on those characters is my thought. So they probably had like a cheaper version of the character when the camera was further back. Because you can't tell a lot of details once. You know, I don't need... You know, I don't need thousands of polys on her hair back here. Because you can't even see her hair, you know? So... They probably had an LOD where the character gets cheaper depending on the camera. And the 120 version was one when the camera's really close or when they were in a cutscene for sure. But luckily, Unreal handles a lot of those LODs for you. You can just um, just tell it how many, per, what percent of the triangles you want it to cut down on, and it'll just do it. And 90% of the time, you can barely tell the difference between the two models. It does such a great job. It's really just the best engine out there. It's a huge reason why I wanted to do the stream, is just to let everybody know, hey, making games is possible, and it's very possible if you're using Unreal Engine. Because if this engine didn't exist, I don't know if I'd be able to make games. I kind of feel like I wouldn't. I, would, I just would have quit by now because it would have took me so long to get everything done. But on here, you can make just about anything. Um, in fact, we'll, we'll show off a really stupid thing I made just because. And it's actually the level I'll be on after the one I'm on right now. How much of the game's background did I have before Alice? How much of all game's background? Zero. This is the first game I ever worked on. I learned games through this game rather than... Um... Oh, 
rather than go to school, I said I'm just going to learn Alice instead. So this was a stupid thing that I just made just because they had a stream about doing endless runners and I was like, I bet I could get that done and it took me like a day. One day, because the engine's so cool, you can kind of just do whatever you want in it. And, you, and in blueprints, you can get it in super fast. So in one day, I could get this done. I've, I've refined it since one day, but 90% of what's here was in one day. And I still have to go through it one more time and actually make it look good, which is what I'll be doing when I'm done with the water temple. But it's just this like fun little stupid mini game to get down the mountain really fast. Because we're at the top of a mountain, those last two levels, and I want to get to the bottom of it. And this is what I came up with on how to get there really quickly. And it's fun. It's a nice break up from all the hack and slash. You have to decide which direction to hit from. If you hit the left side, you get hit. If you don't push anything at all, you get hit. So you got a right and left attacks, and you have to hit the right direction. There's even a thing where I'm slightly off, but if it's close enough, it, um, it counts. And that's just Unreal being cool. Jumping, colliding with the meshes here, she'll trip, see through, just so easy to put things in in the engine. And it only took like a day. Yeah, it is, yeah, basically it's its own level for just a little bit. Just just a really quick, quick, br fun level to do. Um, I won't do any of the collecting the Vorpal letters or small T or a bunch of other things that I'm doing in the other levels, but it's, a, it's a, like a nice little fun thing. So, yeah, I mean, you don't need much of a game's background to work in Unreal. There's enough examples on how to make games. I didn't know what a normal map was when I first started. And that's that's a pretty, like, simple thing to know about in game development. Um, and we didn't know that when we first started. There's I can always link. I'm both ashamed of it and not ashamed of it. Our very first trailer for the game is just awful. Alice looks terrible, there's no gameplay, it's all just, it's it's awful. Um, but it's kind of fun to know that I started total trash, and there's an, a decent game now. This one's almost over. It has a, I think it has a hundred, I think it has a hundred uh, tiles. Basically it's just adding tiles to the end of the level. And this is where the tiles stop, because we had a hundred. Um, but yeah, I mean that's 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 that really. It's it's just a lot of little little fun little things we put in. I'm gonna do this one. Yeah, she's got some jump on her. She's got some ups. You definitely want her on your basketball team. Stripe leggings. Um. Maybe uh, maybe some socks or something like that. I know she used to look like a maid though too, so I've changed Alice quite a bit. Obviously, she needed it. Threw it instead. Yeah. I'm not sure how high her, her leggings ever went though. I, I didn't want to basically over sexualize a character. There's plenty of that already. Socks, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Alice is all blueprints. I have yet to open up anything C++. So, that's 100% blueprints. Blueprints work just as well as... Um... Sorry, I gotta change the game mode. It's still in the uh, sliding game, it always does that. I always forget. Blueprints works just as well as C++ for humans, like you will ne you'll never be able to tell the difference.
but um, but programmers could tell you know it's just a little bit it's a little bit a little bit faster C++ is going to be a little bit faster how do I make the tiles stop oh gotcha you mean on the other level where we're creating a new tile as you go down that thing yeah it just stops after a number um, every time I create one I add to a variable you know plus one so it just there's 11 tiles there's 12 tiles there's 13 tiles I create a new one there's 14 tiles until I hit 100 and just say is there a hundred yes and I, and I don't do anything I just stop running that script but if it says oh we're under a hundred well then create another tile and it just kind of keeps doing it um, every time I get to the end of one tile I call that script and I create another one and it's so far out it's like 10 12 tiles out you can't see that far so players can't really tell that the tiles are being created I actually won't be back on this level to, to clean it up. So this is another level that's like at its 70%. And I, I gotta come through at some point and actually get it up to where it belongs. So a lot of the enemies aren't working as well as they should. It doesn't look as good as it should look for right now, but it's at 70. The idea is in. I wouldn't want to ship it, but it 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 certainly works. So like this enemy's here. He doesn't belong here. He's not supposed to be here right now. This was just because I had him when we took it to PAX. So yeah, definitely flare. I stop after a certain number of tiles. Um, no, I didn't go to school for anything. Um, I just picked it up through Google. As a kindred dev on Twitch says, YouTube University. I'm sure lots of people say that, but Google University. Just, uh, just picked it all up by Googling a lot. Yeah, there's a lot more that can just be done in that last 20%. You just get the bones in, but at least I, you know, I know the level works. The, the the moving around is fine. Like I actually took this out to PAX um, two years ago, and people played it in in, in real life. Um, and it was actually the first time anyone had ever played the game besides me, and which is kind of stupid. But luckily, I had play tested it so much there weren't any major bugs. I didn't have a bad time. Um, because it's actually kind of a bad idea to, to, the first time anyone's going to play it is in a live audience in the middle of a game convention, but it didn't go bad at all. Um, we threw in a quick boss, that's what's right here. Um, but it went just fine, and this played just fine. People didn't complain about how empty it was, but there's a lot more to add in that last 20%, but it'll, it'll look a lot better than this. So, hopefully it'll be kind of fun. I 
guessing Slime Ranchers is coming to an end. Sounds like it's the uh, final song there. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that one finished. It'll be kind of nice when it gets done. It's got a little while though. There's some decent levels in here. Yeah, we'll look at Alice here real quick. Um, since someone was asking about Alice's tries. I said it's, it's mostly hair it's not a uh, it's not too complicated especially not in the uh, clothes and everything because we knew that the third person camera would always be fairly far back um, she is 19,000 so what did I say 20 16 something like that I said one of those two I said 20 because I said one fourth was her hair and that's what I believe that she's pretty much 15,000 tries 14 I mean 16 15 and then hair there's just a whole lot of hair. Um, I think that last three was added when we did uh, her last update, which really worked on her hair. Um, but yeah, at some point we will um, have a new costume. That's a big one that we're working on. That's a big reason why even I even want to just get her finished so I can just move on to a different costume. She's been in this school uniform for years now and it's just been so long. I'm just ready for her to not be in it anymore. She's got a different, she's got a bunch of different costumes. So we'll go to the maze. Yeah, we'll do the maze. So 
So I have a feeling none of these guys work. Um, a lot of the enemies in here are over a year old. And I haven't, you know, after I get the bones in, I go somewhere else and I do the bones on something else. Um, and I haven't been in here in so long that I think all the enemies in here don't work anymore. We've updated the skeleton, we've updated the animations, we've updated how they, um, the parent blueprints work. So at this point, we, uh, I think all the characters don't work correctly. There's a lot in here that doesn't work. So that's an LOD on a tree. And it looks terrible. But that's supposed to be about this big on screen. And the LODs, the numbers are set up incorrect. So that's that's what the tree should have looked like once you back up. So it's probably not supposed to LOD like that till you're way further back. But all the LODs right now are not on. So a lot of the trees are just disappearing. So this is that bell I was talking about earlier that I went to Wikipedia to see what this would sound like. Which tends to actually drive my cats nuts. He's doing fine on about it though. Um, yeah, and then the costumes. I'll, I'll do a costume real quick. But, I mean, it's not in, but this is what it would look like. That's a costume change. But then I just switch it over to a Dormouse costume in blue, which obviously it won't look like. So these guys don't work currently. We've got an old skeleton. Yeah, there's a little animation for you to see when you change costume. And you can change swords as well, um, but none of the other swords are in yet. There's just a lot of little things I have to start, sort of get through. Um, all those kinds of add-ons. Basically feature creep, things that I probably should have never added in the game to begin with. But I added it in because uh, I couldn't tell myself no, and now it's 700 years later, and I'm still working on this game. When I should have said no, got it done, and then added it later. You know, for an indie game, this is as long to play and, like, get things done as, um... <laughs> this game's as long to play and get things done as a, uh... As, like, DMC is in, like, Bayonetta, like those AAA games. He's moving. That's good. Super broken right now. take me a little while until I get back to this level, but it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to getting those guys back in. I 
or you got to find someone else who really loves programming. Um, I suggest a team any day. If you got friends who are into it, partner up with them. It certainly helps. I actually enjoy programming, um, uh, which is nice. You kind of have to be a. It, it helps to be a little bit of a freak and actually enjoy it. Um, obviously, it's not for everybody. But I personally enjoy pro programming. But I do like the art side of things. Like I was a comic book artist really before this. I mean, certainly what my background's in. Um, I think that helps a lot with animations because I understood how to like how I would draw the panel. You know, you don't, you never punch like this in a comic book. You punch pulling all the way back and all the way forward. And you do the same thing in animation so that it's easily read from people playing, especially on a third person perspective. Um, but I did in, in eventually enjoy the, the, the programming aspect of solving things and doing it cheaply and everything. So I get it though, if you're excited for outfits, it is a lot of fun, but jump in, make a simple game. That's something I wish I had done. Everyone said, make a simple game, get something done first, then worry about your bigger one. And then I just worked on the bigger one, not realizing that because my code used to suck, I'd have to rebuild my code, then rebuild my code, then rebuild my code, then rebuild a character, then rebuild a, a, a static mesh. To the point that I've rebuilt this game like six times, I could have actually just made two other short games and I'd still be exactly where I'm at on this game. So start with something small and make a game first. Then when you rebuild your code, rebuild it for a different game and then kind of keep doing it. Then you can build up to the big game. Exactly. Strong silhouettes, exaggerated emotions. We don't really have such strong silhouettes, unfortunately. It's a lot of... Um, um, the modeler, Dave, he does a lot of the characters and the, and the stuff like that too. And then I draw a lot of the stuff and I could have worked a little bit harder on making sure that they, they read a little easier. But um, I'll, I'll worry about that on the next set of characters and I got myself locked out. I'm not supposed to come here this direction and sure enough, I'm just trying to get through a quick boss fight using the T. Um, another huge feature creep thing I did was adding in a, a mid boss fight basically. And you know what? We're gonna cheat. We're just gonna take care of the enemies before the battle begins. playthrough you won't actually have a uh, bow and arrow so you won't be able to do that but second playthrough you're free to just take care of everything so this is a store we'll be able to upgrade a lot of the things here get new magic all that kind of stuff buy new outfits right here but then also there so this huge feature creep thing where you basically go into a miniature world and fight a boss there and 10 different bosses as if there wasn't enough bosses in this game so I got like 20 bosses I have to create which is just too much I shouldn't have done that but whatever it's in now and I'm just gonna keep moving forward I'm gonna be really proud of myself when I'm done but it'll be you know the year 2042 when I'm actually finished Yeah, it's like 20, because it's one per level, so there's like 10 legit levels. Like, the sliding game, does, I don't count as a level, um, and there's a couple of things like that in the game. So there's ten, there's a, a boss per level. We saw the caterpillar earlier, that thing right there, and then the three, like, um, jizzle statues, those, those three guys who attack you. Um, the big gold one definitely counts as the boss. And then there's these... 10 little miniature level um, bosses, these mid bosses, so it's like 20 bosses. I did too much. It'll make replaying fun though, because all these 10 miniature bosses, the, the mini boss, uh, the mid bosses, they'll be just regular enemies on the harder playthroughs, on like the extreme mode or whatever. So this creature right here is a mid boss, and it'll just be a boss on the, uh, it'll just be a character you'll fight in the other playthroughs. So 
It'll make replaying it have a lot more fun, I guess. Because you'll have new enemies to, to beat up. Harder ones, of course, too. Yeah, replayability is definitely an issue when you have like hack and slash games. Because there's no, I don't know, something like Dragon Age, something about it with all those story choices and playing evil or, or good and different characters you can bring into your squad. Replayability, that's easy. But on like something like DMC or Bayonetta, after you beat it once, it's like, I don't need to play that again. Um, but I did end up playing DMC multiple times, which was different for me. I don't tend to replay games. I'd rather move on to a new one and see what that one feels like. Um, but I did play the MC on all the difficulties and got like 100% of achievements, which funny enough was the first game I ever got 100% achievements for. I don't really achievement hunt. So yeah, that's uh, one of the, like, ten mini-bosses. You found 30 gigabytes of sound on GTC. Crap, I don't even know about those. I'll have to look into that. 30 gigabytes. My goodness. Secret missions? No, this is about as close as it gets to secret missions. How's it going, George? George, how's it going? Um, actually, DJ, if you want to do me a favor, just drop that link in there. <laughs> I want to check out the 30 gigabytes of sound. Yeah, if you drop it in here, I'll put it in the uh, YouTube as well, since we have some people on there. Um, yeah, I'll drop that link in there. If you have it. If you don't have it, it's fine. If you're already off of it, that's cool too. Um, I'll find it eventually. But with that, yeah, that'd be great. I'd like to share that. Um, 30 gigabytes, that's, uh, that's a ton of sound. That's pretty cool. I don't have any secret missions. This is about as close as it gets. You have to find the T to be able to shrink yourself to begin with. So there's always this, this kind of stuff right here hidden somewhere in a level. Um, and then if you find it, then you can bring it back to the store, Cheshire store. Um, and then you can play the mini boss. Then you got to beat the mini boss, then you get what's inside the chest. So... That's about as close as secret as it's going to get, is I still make the player find the stuff. And there's a lot of things to find in this game. Um, what else do we have here? So this is definitely one of those places I'm going to be adding in, in one of those uh, mini bosses. In here, I'm just going to put in one of the larger enemies, and I'll just be walking back and forth on a replay. So in the second level, you'll just be like, oh, crap, things have changed. You know, I don't want people to, get, to feel like they're playing the same game on a hard difficulty. So I'll be changing things fairly early. Um, and if someone didn't fight all the mini-bosses, they'll actually be fighting something for the first time. So then there's these collectibles, too, all the chess pieces. So there's a lot of collectibles um, that'll upgrade your health or your magic or give you mini bosses to fight. Or in this case, once you collect all the Vorpals, you actually upgrade your sword and get a new skin for it so it can look different. Um, and some of the skins will actually affect, will give you abilities to affect 
enemies when you hit them with it. So, but other than that, no, no secret, no, no giant secret areas. Not, not that I'm aware of yet. Made money? No, not, not much, not really. Um, it was on Kickstarter for a little while, but that was really just kind of to gauge interest and see if people liked it. And we were going to GDC, and it was like, I mean, not GDC, we we're going to PAX, and it was like, what's the point of being in PAX if, um, if we don't really have a game to sell? So it was like, well, we'll do a Kickstarter at the same time, and we'll see if we can get a few people excited about the game. And there were some. It wasn't the most successful um, Kickstarter of all time, that's for sure. But I think it gauged some interest that if people know about the game, they were interested. We did very well for, you know, random players walking past and going, hey, what's that? And they'd come to our booth and they'd play for a while and we got great feedback. Um, but no, we haven't really made much money off of it. I just got for the first time, honestly, some cheers here on Twitch. But even then on Twitch, I'm just doing this to kind of talk about the engine and show people that, hey, I'm still working on this, by the way. Um, so I think we'll do fine when the game sells. I've been bringing up this one a whole lot recently. I love bringing up this one. It's it's a This game is a motivator to me. Um right there and I'll put in the twitch as well uh, this game it's steam spy so they tell you about how much games have sold and they have you know 181,000 owners which means probably 181,000 people have purchased this game for nine dollars and 99 cents at about that price I like to round down the number to Dave and I the developers of this game even though it's like 90% me um, but he does all the modeling, and I want him to be able to be a full-time developer like me so we can make more games, uh, comes down to a dollar piece. Dollar for me, dollar for him. Uh, $9.99, we could, we could do that. So that's $180,000. That's quite a bit of money. He could be a full-time developer as well with that game if we had made that. That game, you can beat in four hours maximum. Like, that's, that's a long time it would take you to beat that game. It's probably more like two hours. The levels in that game are this size right here this circle just off to the edge and back enemies show up you beat them up next level enemies show up you beat them up next level ritzler so you have you helped in that hundred eighty one thousand um and that's it that's the entire game and that there's one in buildings during the day level two is buildings during the night <laughs> uh level three is is in a Tokyo land, I think, um, kind of like a, a Japanese inspired like temple kind of a thing. Then you actually just move, you know, 600 feet to the north of that. And that's a new level. It's just another circle. Um, and then you fight a boss and I think that's the entire game. Uh, so they, and there's boss fights actually in the middle of those too. Yeah, I'd definitely buy it on sale. And I actually have it on Xbox 360, so the, to the bring up that point, too, it's on Xbox 360. 181,000 is just what it sold on Steam. That has nothing to do with what the numbers on Xbox or Xbox One or Xbox 360. I have it on 360. So they made more than that money as well. Um, and that game, it's not as deep as my, my game. It doesn't have as many bosses. It doesn't have a story that, at least not to the level of mine, there'll be voice acting, there'll be bosses there's there's a there's a real story um here not to make fun of their game at all they understood they were probably making a demo and they did a great job at that demo um and it was a really good game it's fun i bought it lots of other people bought it, it has a great rating on steam a lot of people are very happy um so i'll be making so you know that's a motivator for us we just gotta get the game out and hopefully we can make enough money that we can make another game. That's pretty much all we're looking forward to. Make enough cash to make another one. Make it to make enough cash to make another one and keep doing that. It's a lot better than going to work and working for somebody who doesn't, you know, where the uh, company either doesn't appreciate you or it's hard to show up in the morning. Um, best job I ever had, honestly. They, it was the most racism I've ever felt in my entire life, to tell you the truth. And that's not something I've had to deal with much in my life, but um, 
that was definitely something that sucked a lot. There was there was there was some some garbage working in uh, really big companies that make a whole lot of money. Unfortunately, very good old boys club. Um, and I'm not a good old boy. I don't even know who played in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Have no clue. And that was here in Minnesota. Premium sound effects. Okay, so I'm going to drop in some sound effects here into the chat. And then I'm going to totally steal these myself. Shouldn't use the word steal since they're actually giving them away. Thank goodness. But yeah, it's a great community of game developers who are just here to help each other out. I love that. But these are some sound effects apparently you are free to use, which is nice. If you're making hack and slashes, if you're making gun games, all that kind of stuff. It's really nice when people are being cool about it. Thank you so much, DJ. DJ Shiro here uh, sh sharing that with everyone so they can um, use sounds as well. I'll be checking that out when I'm off the stream here. Because I don't feel like doing Foley at all, doing all the sound effects. That'll just be too much work. I got enough on my plate. Darkness, Realm of Darkness vibes. Yeah, this is probably the darkest our level's gonna get. This is definitely the, um, you know, if you do storytelling or look into that, the, uh, what, Mouth of the Whale. That, that worst moment before the hero goes on. If you look at the hero's journey or whatever, like, this is definitely that, that low point before everything kind of turns around and gets better. Um, we'll do that enemy and that one. So, they all function different. Um, the enemies you fight. So this one, the one shooting at me right now, he boosts other enemies, so that's what that red is. That red one actually makes that guy stronger. If I break it, he'll create another one for him. This time he got a green one. So the green one sucks, because anytime you're close, if that thing shoots off like that, fires that capsule. It's a capsule for now. I'm working on special effects later. That, uh, that green one. Uh, the green capsule will hurt you, so you basically can't be near the guy or the the enemy, or you have to jump in at certain times and then jump back out before you get hit, like that. Or more importantly, you just use your bow and arrow, which is what I'm going to use. <laughs> just shoot it off of him. Yeah, red one again. He's got one more. We're gonna get the, we're gonna get the third one before we uh, beat these guys up, if we can get it. It's all random, so. I'll do a red again just to annoy me. There we go, yellow. So yellow is going to be healing. Um, so when you hear that sound or the effect goes off, this guy's gaining his life back. So you kind of have to focus on them. Otherwise, they'll gain their life back anyways. So we'll take that last crystal out and we'll let him choose whatever he's going to choose. And we'll see if we can actually beat these guys up. He also runs away. These guys are all based off of chest characters. Um, so this is a bishop. So his attack is basically the movement of a bishop that X. Um, this guy a rook. Um, actually, this guy's a lance, which is only a shogi, which is Japanese chess. I'm probably saying that incorrect, by the way. Um, these guys will actually be in the chess level, of course, but they're here just because I don't have the ninjas that will actually be in this level yet. And therefore, he turns back into a chess piece, which is the bishop there. The zombie sounds good, real good. Kingdom Hearts thing. Which Kingdom Hearts thing? Uh, 
big surprise this guy blocks a lot of things and when that's on any attack you do will get blocked even if it's a heavy attack like that otherwise it's you can get through with the heavy attacks but they all have their their fun little quirks about them you have to you can't just use the same strategy for every enemy you have to pay attention otherwise you get countered like that Realm of Darkness is in the King of Kingdom Hearts. Gotcha. Um, I don't remember. I haven't played Kingdom Hearts in I don't know how long, but you know, I I think I've only played the main series, so Kingdom Hearts One and Kingdom Hearts Two. I've tried some of the offshoot ones, but I I don't end up making it. I'm actually gonna lose here. Yep, got my butt kicked. Um. But yeah, so I haven't played Kingdom Hearts in I don't know how long because I haven't made a one in the the regular series in years. But I am looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 3. Right? Alice totally died. I totally got my butt kicked. I kind of goofed around there for a little while. And I really haven't figured out yet if I'm going to have any, like, healing or, you know, if enemies will just heal you off of a certain percent. Like, Double May Cry, where you get those green orb head things that they have. Um, right now, that's in. The code is in. But I'm not sure if I'll keep it. I may actually take it back out. Just let you die. Like, screw it. You, you lost, you lost. Or I may have the healing come out of these things. Um, I haven't decided. I'm not going to do items, I know that, because that's just more work for me if you're able to carry items around with you and buy them at the store. Eh, it's too much work, so. It'll be one of the two. It'll either be out of these things or it'll be out of enemies. So it's texture, Cheshire Cat. No, no, I, I kind of, I don't have much to do this week for the most part. I really wanted to get that zombie game um, worked on, <laughs> which is why I'm goofing around and being stupid and just flying, basically. Uh, but I really wanted to work on that zombie game uh, this week and, and do a tutorial on how to set up characters and animation blueprints and everything like that. Um, but the character isn't ready, the skeleton isn't, so it'd be really boring to watch characters that have zero animation, so they're just stuck there. Heal system off the mob's HP. I don't know how that one would work quite yet. Um, based off the mob's HP, like when they die, the HP is going to be zero. So I'm, I don't, unless you mean like what it used to be, like their max HP, I guess. Um, so I don't, honestly, I kind of want a, a, a break from Alice. So <laughs> Demo Wing is completely fine. Get apart. Okay, so a percentage of its max HP. Um, yeah, that could work too. I think the way I have it currently is that if you're under like 25% life, you have a chance of getting your health back. And that'll happen from time to time. You'll see me fight like the ants and you'll get, uh, you'll see her get green instead rather than yellow. Um, but it comes at a cost of experience points. So the better player you are, the higher experience you get, the faster you level up, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's basically what I have in currently, is if you're under 50% life, it's a really low chance, but there's a chance. So basically keep your life up and you'll have a higher chance of just keeping your experience. Otherwise you may get technically penalized and rather than getting experience, you get HP instead back. It's not bad, it's just, I don't know if anyone even needs their life back. The game's not all terribly easy, I mean terribly difficult, because even in the dark, when I can't even see anybody, I'm able to fight them. Because I have visual cues, I have sound cues, they really do not kind of want to hit you, as long as you keep your head on you and not just mash buttons, you don't get hit. So I think it's a little easy, but then again, the game's really easy to me, but I've been playing it now for I don't know how long. There is a level system. Um, you get 20 levels maximum. Um, so she gets a little stronger. The swords level up for every damage they put out. There is 
these swords. Uh, so they're level 1. This one damages 13, has a critical chance of 15%, and it's experience right there, 65. That's how much damage this thing has done since I've started the game. It has done 65 points of damage. So once it gets up to 1,300, it'll level up to 2. Um, whereas this one has a wind-up speed that goes up, and it has a higher damage uh, experience just because this one deals more damage. So hitting it X amount of time sh should make sense. How's it going? Uh, different kind of stupid. Like, I feel rude calling you that. But yeah, how's it going, man? Um, yeah, this, this section is really dark as hell. The point is... So this is later on in the game, Ritzler. Uh, so this section is based on, hey, play basically blind. You're going to have to fight a couple of enemies just blind. You're going to have to fight them just paying attention to where your sword is. Any cues you can figure about where they are. Pay attention to the sound. But, like I said, this is really the darkest moment kind of in Alice's storyline. So I kind of wanted to play off of that by kind of putting you in a little bit of a, a bad scenario. In this cave, you'll just be fighting in the dark. And it's only in this one fight. It's just to break up the fights a little bit. But if you really pay attention, you know, you can slow them down. Something like that. And boom, you don't have to worry about that one anymore. And at this point, they should be pretty much pros. They would have been playing five, six levels at this point, so um, it wouldn't be that wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Luckily, luckily, there's a lot of stuff in this game, um, so I haven't actually showcased a lot of it yet, um, and I just kind of had to get through it. Um, and as you up late, upgrade your weapons, so like this one, the wind up speed uh, gets faster and faster. So at some point, you're you're waving the the big giant super strong sword about as fast as you can wave your super your, your small swords. So this thing can deal a lot more damage as you go on. Um, same thing here, it's offhand, does very little damage. As we're seeing, it only does 3 damage. The main sword does 12. Um, and as you level up, the offhand kind of catches up to the main sword. Last but not least is the katana blades. And this one has a very strong timing to kind of light them on fire. And as you level up, that, that uh, gets easier and easier. So that one right there. If I hold it too long, she does that. If I let go too early, it's just a swing. But if I let go at the right point, and it's really tight timing. Um, it takes a while to kind of chain to get that. And you can chain them together, in fact, too. Like that. But yeah. They all have their fun. So using all the different weapons, you kind of get to boost them up. They all have experience, so not only does she upgrade, but her weapons upgrade as well. But she only has 20 levels, and it's just kind of a base. Very small stats go up. Um, she just kind of very slowly increases. It's not much leveling up's not really the big thing, especially because I understand that people just can just grind the levels over and over again. So I'm not too worried about the balancing issue of it all. Um, but yeah, there's 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 some stuff in there. Glowing system with the upgrade. Um, you mean with your swords? Uh, no, not so much. They 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 will have different. Uh, there's different skins. You get those whenever you collect the Vorpal letters. Those V O R P A L things right at the bottom that you kind of like you collect as you go on through the level. Um, every time you get a full set, you can get a different skin. Also, uh, Cheshire. Where are we at? Where are temple? Cheshire sells skins, sells that kind of stuff, and then that can change the look of your swords. Um, it doesn't really like change per level though. So you could have that sword if you want all the way up to max level of your swords. If that's the look you want, then that's the look you get. It's just up to you, whatever you, you choose to do. So we'll go to the store here. So this is where they would sell uh, different swords. As we see in the tiny picture, there's a different version in there. Um, the old swords used to look like that. And, but that's where you get new magic, you get uh, upgrades in your bow and arrow. So when you first get it, you're actually not able to charge it up like that. Also, 
that right there is kind of automatic. If I shoot, my hand's not even on there. And she'll just automatically do the flip, she'll jump in the air, she'll charge up the shot, and then she'll shoot. And all that is an upgrade and a move. And you can do it anytime you fire while dodging. It's just a really quick version of the charge shot. So regular shot, regular shot, charge shot. Same thing here, charge shot. But when you first get it, you can't charge. So there's a bunch of upgrades in there. So you can upgrade your punch. That The fist um, that she punches with gets larger as long as you upgrade it. So that's the big version. Um, but when you first get it, that fist is barely any larger than hers. But yeah, there's a lot of upgrades, a lot of like just fun stuff to to to, to worry around um, and to um, play around with new outfits. Um, different particle trail for each sword if the sword changes by a lot. I think I'm gonna have some elemental ones, like an ice one and everything too. Um, so obviously that'll need a different particle trail. This particle trail is really built for a black and blue sword. Um, Probably not so much for some of the other ones. Um, as for distract me while playing, um, rather than demoing, rather than deving right now, I don't really feel like honestly, like I, I barely kind of turned on the game right now. <laughs> I, I didn't really, I don't really feel like working on Alice this week. I want to take a break. I want to be kind of off of Alice for a week. I want to work on that zombie game. I want to do tutorials, build out a master material. That sounds a lot of fun to teach people how to build one of those. And then I'm ready to get back to Alice. But I've been working on her nonstop now for every day, you know, five, six hours for three weeks, pretty much. Three, four weeks, four weeks. Um, so taking a week off would be kind of nice. Or at least just play around with it at night. Um, so I have no problem demoing because I'm uh, it's kind of fun companion system like a flying ball or something nothing too fancy she basically does have a companion and it'll be in the form of cheshire right here cheshire will just pop up all over the place not only as a tutorial teaching mechanics not only to kind of guide you of where you should go next that kind of stuff um because cheshire does just know everything of course um but also a lot of jokes so that you have somebody with you just Cheshire is kind of always around, right? Um, and if you ever played uh, Arkham, you'll see it's kind of like that Joker thing in that last Batman game. If you if you play that one, if you didn't, then then it's then you have no idea. But that's fine. Um, take time for Alice. You take time when you do. Oh, Alice. I don't know. I don't choose, like, when I take time. Unfortunately, sometimes I just get sick of the game and I just can't take it anymore. I just don't turn it on. Um, and I had, like, a year of not doing very much in this game. Um, I'd work on it an hour maximum. And then it's just like, I had to turn it off. I'm sick of this. Um, and even then, that wasn't daily. But the last six months now, I've been on it pretty, pretty hardcore. I've been working on it for, like, five years. But I taught myself how to play games off of this. So it's just whatever I can stomach for the most part. And then at some point I can just like, I can't do this anymore. I go play Xbox and do something else. Um, sometimes it's really frustrating to game develop. And you got a lot of code that doesn't work or enemies that don't work. Or you're like, oh, I got to do that animation again. And I just have done it six times. Or it's just really tedious things like moving squares ever so off. Like there was some zebra buff fighting on all these squares because they were all exactly the same height so the game doesn't know which one to draw so you get this like flickering effect right where they they overlap um so i had to go through each and every other box basically and drop it down one or go up one and that kind of stuff's just tedious and boring and you're just like oh i don't feel like it and you just kind of walk away for a little bit and be like i'll do it tomorrow you don't want to put stuff off too long but it does happen Especially when you're working by yourself. You're kind of just stuck on things for too long. A big bonus of those working by yourself is you go, I'm not going to do level design today. So right there, I got Z-Buff fighting. So where those two boxes are meeting each other, they're fighting on which one should be seen because they're the exact same height. Uh, but the bonus is if stuff like that bothers me, I just work on animations instead or something like that. 
So they're both at the exact same height here, and that's why it won't decide. So all I need to do is just make one a little bit lower. And a human being can't tell the difference in that number, but the video game can. So ta-da, I win, Z-Buff fighting's over. But you'll see that in games all the time. I know there's a really big one in uh, Killer Dead something. I forgot what that is, Killer Dead. I forgot what that game was called. It's a really silly name. Um, have I done the post? How did I do the post process outlines? Sorry, that question's been up there for a while. I, I saw it. I just was trying to answer some other ones real quick. Um, I'll show you in a second. Yeah, I get burned out a lot. Do I do all the dr drawing the textures myself? Yes, Killer is Dead. Thank you. There's a big one right before you fight the Alice in Wonderland level, um, right before you fight the boss two pieces of floor right before you walk in they are fighting like all hell it's just this giant piece that you have to walk over or maybe it's off to the side but it's just it was kind of like ooh, that's so obvious and they just fight like all hell um they were just set at the exact same height killer is dead that is exactly the one i'm talking about they had a really cool like freeze pause time um different kind of stupid the the outline is a pulse process yeah you, you basically just do like Deciding, I got another one right there. Um, you basically decide like where the the things are drawn, and then you have to minus. It's a bunch of dumbness. I I did a tutorial off of uh, UDK. This post process is all the way back from UDK before Unreal Engine was even available for most people to to play around with. Um, but they have recently done one. I just caught a mistake there. Those two shouldn't be there, so you can't even see them. Um, same thing here. They have recently done a done a post process on Unreal Engine's official channel, and it is far and away better than mine or my adapted version, you know. I adapted mine from something, someone's. So I'm gonna drop that in the chat. Sorry that took me so long to answer. Right there. You'll want that. That is the official, um, so not official, but they did their own post process, cell shading look, and their version Far and away kicks my version's butt. It has a lot more uh, adaptable things. You can change this, you can change this, you can do this. It, it works really well against certain edges. Uh, the chess level in my game, for for instance, has a lot of uh, depth of field where it blurs out the stuff way in the back so that you won't notice how thick that line gets because it's basically drawing a line against the floor then it's drawing another one drawing another one drawing another one because i'm hitting the edge and it happens so much all the way in the back it's just this giant thick line um and that may still happen here that may just be a problem with using an edge um because there's nothing you can kind of do once you are exactly sort of horizontal with something but uh Either way, go with theirs. You wouldn't want mine anyways. Otherwise, I would, I'd seriously just post in the chat, but you wouldn't want to recreate the one that they have there. You'll kind of understand it better too since he goes around explaining it, which is nice. And then honestly, even if you don't want to watch the video, I think that there's just a link you can just download the, the post process, but the outline shader is really good on that one. Like I even debated for a split second, should I just delete mine and go with theirs? But I said no. At this point, at least, at least mine has a look, even if it has flaws in it. But if I do this game again, I'd go with theirs. If there's a sequel to this game, I'm going with theirs, that kind of a thing. I'm not even positive I'll do an outline look next time. We'll see, though. Uh, yeah, Killer is Dead is definitely a good-looking game. Um, I think that helps with doing a very stylized game. It holds up. Uh, if you look at any game that tried to be super realistic 10 years ago, it looks like trash now. But then go play Wind Waker. It still looks good to this day. Go play Animal Crossing. Still is fun to look at today. 
So the more stylized you go, the longer it kind of can stay. It's the longer it can have a shelf life. And it's actually easier on you as a developer. So once again, someone asked, did I do the textures myself? Yes, but a lot of them are, um, you know, not good. They're not, they're not PBR. The ones that are PBR, I use Quixel. So, you know, I can just drop in wood and then I can turn it red and I just turn it whatever color I want. So I was doing that on stream last week. I put in this, this red texture on the wall. Um, and I'll be doing things like pots and everything on the stream here soon. I got to texture that one. This, this wheel right now. So there's a lot of little things I still have to texture, but luckily a lot of this game is over. Uh, a lot of this stuff's bullcrap. Like, I don't remember what this supposedly wood texture is right here. This brown one. But it's not... I'm not even... I don't think it's supposed to be like a real wood texture. It, I think I just turned it brown, and it was like a bunch of streaks, and it just looked like wood texture. So I just... I kind of make stuff up, and luckily most people don't notice. Games is just cheating. Just cheat your butt off whenever you can. And luckily mine's not all PBR, so I can cheat and people won't notice that it doesn't look right. This wouldn't work in a Call of Duty. This stuff wouldn't look right, but in my game it's kind of cartoonish, so people give me forgive it. And it's easier on me as a developer. Yeah, color in video games. Coming to SNS. Understand a modern shunning of color. Exactly, right? Color is definitely nice. And it holds up for longer. Like, I think this game will be decent enough to look at 10 years from now. Whereas if I tried to go super realistic, you know, skin's all going to have, you know, like Final Fantasy where the, the, the light behind it and you can see the blood vessels and everything. It's like, oh, mine doesn't look like that at all. PBR, uh, physical based rendering. Sorry, good point. Bottom, bottom kick. Thanks for, uh, for bringing that up. That I shouldn't use... You know, the, the shorthand versions of things. PBR, physical based rendering, like Pixar, they kind of made that huge. Um, and that's what Unreal Engine 3 to 4 made a big difference, is that they went to physical based rendering. That you could have wood bounce light off of it the way wood would bounce light off of it, as long as you set up your textures correctly. But that takes a lot of work to kind of get that all to, to work correctly um, whereas me I'm, I'm I'm close and then I just cheat the rest of the way I get pretty close and then I just cheat and I go good enough my game's kind of a cartoon and kind of real and kind of not it's just whatever the heck I feel like doing at the time so we'll be finishing up this character at some point I gotta texture him and then I gotta get Humpty Dumpty up here to work. Currently doesn't attack anything. whatever else enemies are in here but otherwise this is actually a fairly short level um, which is nice just gonna have a nice break from those longer levels we've been working at so I'll actually be done with this one pretty soon and then I'll be off to the next one just gotta get a few more fights in after I finish the enemies and then we'll be on to the boss fight which actually I would not mind lengthening right now boss fight's gonna be multiplayer no no multiplayer it's be just too much work for me I just I'm just not I'm not gonna do that to myself
Yeah, exactly. For my sake, yeah, you're correct. I, no multiplayer. I just would cry. Um, you know, if I do a part two, I was thinking about doing um, Oz. So Dorothy, the lion, you know, Tin Man, blah, blah, blah. And if I did that, then I'd actually probably want them to travel with Dorothy and just kind of, I'd probably do open world. I'd just make it like six times bigger than this one, uh, which I shouldn't do. Or it'd actually probably be about the same scope as this, because this game plays for eight, nine, ten hours. Um, so it would probably play eight, nine, ten hours as well, but it would just be open world. And this one almost is open world. You can technically see how you're standing here, and then when the next level loads, you're really just behind the door. And then when the next level loads, you're really just, you know, a hundred feet over. So I could have made this technically open world where I put all the levels together. Um, and next time I just do that for real. But I wouldn't mind if someone could just pick up and play the, the lion while you're Dorothy. Or you switch over to the Scarecrow while someone else plays the Tin Man. And then you guys just beat things up with this kind of fast action all at once. But that is a long time away. I still have to like finish a game uh, before I get anywhere near there. And even if I do that, I'd want to break from this kind of game first. So I'm sure it would be a little while until I decide to do something like that. But yeah, there's a there's a chance maybe I'll do a um, a multiplayer at that point with with this kind of a structure game. It wouldn't be the worst in the world. I think I could pull it off. Did I nail exactly where I needed to drop this? I totally did. I got so lucky. I'll pretend like I did that on purpose. I did not. <laughs> and actually, they are separated ever so slightly, aren't they? Yeah, they are. So I'll just pull that in a little bit. What is my background in game development? I have none. You're looking at my background in game development. It's making this video game. <laughs> I started with this video game as my college of how to make video games rather than paying someone to teach me how to make video games. I said, I'm going to go on Google a lot. I'm just going to pay attention and I'm going to learn how to make a game. And that was that. And there's a really good community of people who love helping and at any point you need help let me know i will do my best to help you as well so if you want to make a game it is totally possible especially with unreal engine i cannot praise those people enough who work on this engine and make sure that game developers get to make games which is not something that was doable you know 20 years ago. Not easily. Not as easily as this. And how did that move up? And that did too. That's ridiculous. So this shifted for no good reason. We will uncheck that. On screen, no, I couldn't care less. Um, but I like that it's helpful. I figure it's helpful to see my face since a real human being and whatnot. But um, so I hope it's helpful for people to learn how to make games on here. And this still needs to go over a little bit, doesn't it? very difficult because I'm working in a group so my pivot point is really far away but I think we're gonna have to call it like that no that don't bother me then all you guys are watching me make it so when you play this boss you're gonna run right over here and go see the, the wall doesn't line up but it keeps like snapping this is so annoying 
I could just type in a number. I guess that's probably what I need to do. But I didn't think it would be this difficult. Alright, I think I'm going to call that. We'll see. If it pisses me off in character when I'm actually Alice, then I'll fix it. Do I model the environments myself? I don't do any of the modeling. Um, Dave does that. I have a co-developer. He does all the modeling. I do um, character anatomy. Don't want to be on YouTube after this. No, I'm not going to be a YouTuber after this. I, I really only have it on YouTube because it was only a button more than being on Twitch. But I'd just be on Twitch if I had a choice. Um, you know, if it was Twitch or YouTube, it would just be Twitch. Um, I like Twitch. It's a game development community. It's it's really cool. But um, since it was only like one button more to get it on to get it on YouTube, I put it on there too. Uh, especially because a lot of my tutorials are on there, and a lot of people that helps. Um, as for modeling, I do the anatomy on my characters. He he. I I did comic books before this, so I kind of I know that kind of stuff. I, I'm decent at it. I'm, I guess I'm better than Dave, and that's that's good enough. Um, so I do that, but then other than that, I don't really model. So I do ZBrush and I do all the high high poly details, and then he bakes it down to the low poly. So that's just using like for those who don't understand the high poly, low poly, it's using like a million triangles. So something the game engine would be really pissed off if you were to put in the game because it has to render all those triangles to make everything look really really good, because um, everything is made up of triangle, just. X amount of triangles. You can make any shape with enough triangles. Um, and the high poly use millions. Just millions and millions of triangles. And then you just make a low version that looks really close to it, especially from a distance. And you, um, uh, you just make it look very similar. And that's what I do. I do the high poly, Dave does the low poly. And he makes it look very similar to the high poly version. You use something called normal maps to cheat a lot of lighting details. So like here in all the, the divots in the wood, that's just a normal map. This is a flat plane. It just pretends that light is bouncing off of it higher at the high points and lower in the low points. But that's just a normal map. It's actually just completely flat. It's 100% flat. 100% flat is easier to render in a triangle. You just use two triangles. Boom, you made a square. Um, whereas if you had to dip it in, you need a triangle to dip it in. You need another triangle to dip it back out. You need another triangle to dip it in. You got to do that over and over and over again to create all these details. So that's why we use normal maps. It's just a cheating tactic. Your brain takes the light and pretends that it's actually going in when it is not. This is so annoyingly difficult for no good reason. You know what I need to do? Click, click. There we go. Put my pivot point way closer. Even then. This is still going to be agitating, isn't it? sucks. I need that uh, thing you have in Pagel. 
whenever you're playing Pago and you can move it just a very little. the best we've got thus far. We'll see how it looks. How about that? Because it may be just fine. Probably not. It's going to piss me off. I can already tell. Where did the floor go? Oh. Topology is so boring. Yeah. Yeah, but the, um, I personally really, I think I would enjoy doing the low polys because that's where that silhouette is that you mentioned earlier. And just getting the silhouette to be nice and strong is A, important, and B, it's kind of a lot of fun to me. Um, maybe that's that comic book background though, kicking in again. So there's that Z-Buff fighting again. In a little bit, I'll raise one of these two, point one up or something like that, so that it won't. Actually, we'll snap this a little stronger. 100, that'll help. So they don't overlap so bad. So Dave's doing a zombie versus old people game. That's what I'll be doing next week from scratch, doing the animation blueprints and uh, master materials, how to set up levels, lighting, blah, 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 blah. So you guys would kind of get to see it from scratch. If you're starting in a new game, hopefully it'll be useful. Um, it's kind of what I was wishing I was doing this week, but we didn't have the skeleton ready. Um, but he's using that game kind of to learn Actually, you're never see the floor here because we're gonna have this. Uh, this water is always gonna be here, so I'm not gonna worry about that zebra fighting. No one will ever see that because you'd have to see it through water, which psh, nope. Um, so Dave's using the game to kind of learn how to model and do textures and everything else. And one of these games, I'm going to have to learn how to do low poly so that both of us just know kind of everything. Because I don't know that kind of stuff right now. So I, I got a bit of a gap in knowledge. But I would like to learn low poly at some point. Modeling, environments, all that kind of stuff. How complete is the game? <laughs> kind of hard to gauge. I have a lot of bones built out. So like this level happens to be one of the smaller ones. So building out the bones was, was fairly easy. I'll show you an older version of it. Um, so building out the bones for this was fairly easy. My computer's all pissed because I haven't used it in a little bit. There we go. So that's what this used to look like. So that was like when I built out the bones for it. Um, just kind of set down a lot of textures and uh, a lot of shapes that came with Unreal. And they came with all these like uh, railings and stuff. And then I did this. I, I basically put in the railings, but I did them as gold this time. I didn't make them as high because it was a little high. 
Um, Dave actually, like I handed him, I think all these railings were part of one mesh. So I ended up like having him recreate a lot of these. I, I basically gave him the mesh and then just had him delete the railings off of them and give me the mesh back. Um, so a lot of the levels are basically at this stage though. So I have to go back in and I got to make them actually pull them up to this stage. So no idea how to, how to gauge it because some of the levels look like this where they just are ready to get polished off from 70 to 90 percent and they're done. Other levels are at 30 percent and they got to go to 90. So it, it'd be kind of hard to gauge where I'm at game wise. We still have to do cinematics. We still have to do um, sound effects. Special effects need another pass to make them like I use these circles all the time these little glowy circles i can't use them they're they're always there kind of as placeholders so sorry rupert for it's a little difficult for me to tell exactly how far i am from finishing this game because there's just kind of a lot to be done um it's a little hard to gauge how much There is a hole here. Okay. So let's move this. I'm hoping the game will be out this year, end of the year, um, but we'll see because I wouldn't want the game to actually come out during the winter season because it, it would get buried. A lot of things come out right before winter because they're trying to make that, that Christmas money. Do I have a philosophy? Not so much. Um, it depends on the level. This one I knew you'd be able to see everything when you hit play. You hit play, you'd be able to see 90% of the level. I ended up adding in this boss fight toward the end um, where you even left. Otherwise, the boss fight was supposed to just be right here. So I was just going to have the whole level visible right here and you would just kind of keep circling back, go this way, go this way, go up here, come down, have the boss fight. That was the whole level. That was the point of this one. Um, ended up I didn't like this space for a boss fight, so I ended up adding the boss fight back here. It's just, I put the square back here. I hate it when the engine does that. Um, my mouse was nowhere near this, but from time to time, if you hit both buttons, it just selects it. Anyways, so I ended up just throwing the, the boss fight back here, so everybody, when you actually play the game, you'll be walking through a door, and it'll feel like you walked on the other side of the door. You did not. You you, you went to a whole other place. Um... So the door is actually here. You'll be walking through the door here, but you'll actually be ending up way over here, and no one's going to know that I cheated, and there's no actual level behind you, but whatever. I get to do whatever I want. It's all a big match trick. I don't have a philosophy. A lot of times it's just gray box out, gray box. I just put in meshes so I can kind of see what the level's going to look like. It's kind of hard to visualize if you don't put anything in. Um, I start normally with the terrain, and I kind of just block out how long it would take me to run from one section to section, if I go up, if I go down, all that kind of stuff. So I block in just the walking path. Then I put in the things that block being able to see the larger things. And I kind of work down until I go, okay, this works. And then I probably delete everything that I just put in because that was probably all just squares and blocks and things that don't actually matter. And then I rebuild and I'll be doing some levels uh, there's still three levels to be put in from scratch. Um, those will be put in at the end of the game, so, but that's it. I only have three left. I do not go that way. I hate it when it does stuff like that. Let's see if we can pick a different mesh, and it doesn't. There we go. Um, so I only have three levels left. To build from scratch everything else has some blueprint or you know base set in so I don't have to build it from scratch but there's only but when I do those it'll be toward the end of the game 
and you can kind of see how I do those. In the zombie game that we'll be doing with Dave, those levels are way tiny. Way, way, way tiny. And it's actually a roguelike, so I'm always building the level in the same space, and I'm just changing the way it looks. Um, so that won't be a real good example. How much is that overlapping? Not much at all. That's perfect then. That'll work. Z buff fighting won't matter. No one can get up that high and no one can see that high, so we're good. Although some of these need to be built out. Yeah, it's all smoke and mirrors, exactly. Definitely smoke and mirrors, yeah. If you can cheat, cheat. I mean, this looks like one mesh, it is not one mesh. These are literally the squares that come into Unreal Engine right here, shape cube. They give you a bunch of shapes. And rather than having Dave model me a ceiling, uh, I just use a bunch of shape cubes over and over again to pretend that they are something or other. And it's so far away, it doesn't matter. You can just you just make it all up. It's all just bull crap. I actually find it funnier. The bigger the magic trick, the cooler I think it is, honestly. I've seen a lot of GDC talks. I, I've gone through a lot of like, you know, the stuff I, Epic gives you for free. And you just see how, oh wow, that's that's not happening the way I thought it would. <laughs> And I personally find it funnier, the, the bigger the cheating that they do, the cooler I tend to think it is, honestly. Nine. Nine. So I think this is long enough for a boss fight. I wanted that bird to kind of fly back and forth, although I'm out of my post-process volume at this point. That's what this blending in and out is. So i got to get the post-process to be bigger. Yeah, there it is. I don't even think I like it. Let's uh, take it off, see how that goes. A little dark though. Oh god. So we'd be fighting that bird in here. And I just want it to have enough space that it can fly back and forth. Not too much space though, I don't want you chasing it, just I think this will do. need to be brighter though.
Um, I'm going to build lighting in here because I don't know what this would look like otherwise. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call uh, the stream at this point too because that's going to take a little while and there's no point in everyone sitting around while that happens. Um, and my cats are really pissed at me because I haven't fed them in like an hour and a half. I will see you guys either late tonight or for sure tomorrow in the afternoon. And then next week I'll be starting a game from scratch and I'll make sure those videos are up either on YouTube and they'll be up on my Twitch for at least 14 days because it just keeps it there. So if you're interested in games on like how to do it from scratch and stuff, I'll have that as well. Um, thanks guys for coming along, appreciate it.